I'm Jared, and I'm the co-owner of Ashes to Ashes, and I'm also the cinematographer and editor on our new short film, Closed. Hi, I'm Keelene Chase. I am the other co-founder of Ashes to Ashes, as well as I am the director and writer for our next short, Closed. Hi, I'm Kylie Johnson, also known as Haunted Hippie here on YouTube. I was the eerie girl in the Ashes to Ashes production, Closed, as well as the producer and editor of this behind-the-scenes documentary. My favorite films would definitely have to be The Ring was the first film I ever saw as a horror. I remember literally sneaking into my mom's bedroom and like sitting there like behind her bed like watching it while she was watching it. Love that film. Will stick with me for forever. Other kind of uh, style horror films that I'm really starting to like is psychological ones that really just mess with your mind that kind of how Nightmare on Elm Street did with like sleep. Like you're not, there's nowhere is safe and no one is safe. Like on Sinister. I love that they took away the taboo of children. Like they they played with everything. No one is safe. I think it's multiple movies. I think it's would be Signs, but also The Ring. I think like the scene, especially like in The Ring where she's coming out of the TV. Like I was scared to watch TV after that. Like I just remember like, it ruined TV for me. I think Signs was such a cool movie in terms of like the atmosphere they built without showing like too much. Especially like with the scene where it's like more like found footage and like they look out the window and like they see like the alien walking on the street or something like that. To me, like that was like one of the craziest things, the paranormal activities. I think those were really like ahead of their time in terms of like what they were doing, what they were accomplishing with found footage movies. Cause I think the Blair Witch did something like really great in its time, but Paranormal Activity kind of took it to like the next level and they created a whole like world and storyline with it. The first one, they, you know, they spent like 20K on it, you know, and they made millions off of it. And like, it was so simple for them. Like they literally had one camera set up. They were just setting up all these shots, like no lighting, everything was realistic. That's also like one of my favorites, not in terms of just like being scary, but in terms of what they were able to accomplish. My first favorite horror movie is also The Ring. I don't know why it's all of our favorite horror movies, but that feels like a synchronicity, which is cool. My other favorite horror movie is Hands Down, Ready or Not, which is directed by Matt Bettinelli Olpin and Tyler Gillette. I love a good dark comedy, Samara Weaving, absolutely absolutely kills it in this film. The color scheme also is just mwah, chef's kiss. Uh, my favorite director, uh, I would say, is James Wan. James Wan has done a lot of incredible stuff for, in terms of our, I guess, generation. You know, people have, like, their Wes Cravens and, like, their John Carpenters and stuff like that. And I think he's kind of that level of director for us for horror in our time. I think he sort of revived horror franchise in a way. My favorite horror director is either Ari Aster or Jordan Peele because I am a psychological horror girly. And both of those directors, I just find, really know how to get in my head and subvert my expectations. I think that's such an important facet of filmmaking now because so much has been done, so how are you gonna keep things fresh and surprise me? And those directors do it every time. I would have to say some of my favorite directors are either David Sandberg or James Wan. The movement that David Sandberg can introduce in his films is very enchanting and that is not something you would normally see within a horror film, as well as how David got his start literally from making YouTube videos, uh, short horrors, and then now directs blockbuster horrors and blockbuster films like that is the inspiring story we all strive to be where i personally drew inspiration from for this film close was definitely from creatures in the ring and in grudge the idea of the audience not having a full concept of the creature and just getting snippets of it but constantly wanting more not knowing almost a background or uh, the motive, just knowing like it's coming. And I think we really aim to get that with our film and just allowing it to be less is more and wanting the audience to crave more, even though like we're showing you just a hand or just a shadow or a voice. That definitely is where we drew inspiration in our film. I drew my inspiration for the eerie girl character from Diana in Lights Out, as well as the boy Javier Botet in Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. But honestly, any role that Javier Botet does, he and I kind of have a similar body type. So any of his other roles, whether it be the crooked man or the key demon kind of a guy from Insidious Park, Part four, he just has such a great energy. I love Javier Botet. He's like one of my idols. And there's a little bit of a zombie broken doll kind of a vibe to the movements of the eerie girl. So it's sort of like a combination of a lot of my favorite horror characters. My inspiration for this film, you know, comes from 
a mixture of a lot of horrors that we watched. You know, when we're sitting here and kind of just casually hanging out, we are just having horrors in the background just so we can kind of see things like how what scares are working, like what stories work, what camera movements work and stuff. I'm always constantly looking at lightings in terms of like, even if I'm watching a regular movie or, you know, a TV show, I'm always looking at the lighting. I can't even help it at this point. It kind of like ruins movies for me. Like, are, they, are they in a house? Are they outside? How are they creating moonlight? How are they creating daylight? Where are they putting a fill? Why are they choosing not to put a fill there? Lighting, so it's stylistic, but also like realistic. I try to balance with. There's some parts in clothes where like it does look really stylistic and like, you know, like the orange lights hitting her in a certain way and it's really dark on the other side. But in a way, it's also kind of realistic because all the lights are off in the shop and there's only one light coming in. I would say the biggest challenge for this film, uh, besides like lighting of course, would be sound design. I think sound design is really important and I think people kind of underlook it a lot. You can have an amazing looking film and if your sound sucks and the whole film was kind of like ruined. In post, I had to try to eliminate this constant buzzing humming background noise, which is really hard and super annoying. So I think that's probably the biggest challenge is just, I'm not a sound designer by any means, but I'm the editor, right? So I have to be able to do that and accomplish that. But for me, that's like the most stressful thing about a film. A couple things that I found to be the biggest challenge on set. One, of course, is timing. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong on a film set. That is like the standard saying, and it is true. So you're constantly fighting against time. There's never enough time in the day. So that's why it really is very important that like, your pre-production work is like done to the decimal of its detail. Like it is so important. Another thing for me is delegating just like responsibilities. I like to have my hands and everything. And with this film, we really wanted to fixate on the makeup and being able to rely on others if I just start the basis of the look and allowing them to finish it and trusting that they understand the concept and the vision I had. That was something that I had to learn on this set. And I was very lucky with the crew I had to be able to trust them. And lastly, something that we had to deal with on this set that I didn't expect was we had a cricket that was like hidden under some refrigerators and then eventually like went into the walls. Okay, let's go. There's a so we couldn't safely get him out so we literally had to work around the cricket to the point where we we're going in between takes slamming like the wall where he's at so he'd be quiet and then we only have so much time to shoot before he starts cricking it up again and like we tried so many different methods to get this cricket out like he just wanted a cameo in the film we didn't have time for that he didn't care i will never look at crickets the same but that was definitely the last couple of things that we had to deal with the film that i did not expect my biggest challenge during production was just existing in that makeup for 10 to 12 hours at a time but hands down the biggest challenge of them all was getting the paint off. I got home and just stared in the mirror like, dear God, what have I gotten myself into? I thought, you know, it, it's gonna take some work, but eventually I'll be able to get it off in the shower, no problem. When I tell you that paint was waterproof, I spent over an hour in my shower scrubbing with literally everything that I had and it would not come off. Like I used all my soap, I used all of my sugar scrub, and then when both of those things ran out, I even tried at one point to pour vodka onto to a washcloth because I thought that the alcohol would break up the paint. And if you're wondering why I didn't get some kind of special paint remover or a makeup remover, it's because I live in the suburbs and when I got out of the shower, it was 2 a.m. Everything was closed. And so with what I had, I was able to get most of the paint off, but I was still left with a thin layer of it all over my arms, my legs, my face, hair, everything. So I ended up saying, screw it. I'm gonna be back on set literally in less than 24 hours. I just threw on some socks, some sweat, sweats, um, a long sleeved t-shirt, and I slept on top of my bed instead of in it. Another challenge I had was this weird empathy exclamation that I would make whenever I would do a stunt of having to bash one of the actresses' heads in. Oh, what? Cut. I'm Girl, sorry, stop. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're good. You're good. You're good. It happened more times than I care to admit, but I did get a handle on it and we obviously did get some usable shots. And the last thing that I will say that was a challenge during a shooting was definitely having to get into character really quickly. Lighting and setting up a shot can rightfully take a very long time and sometimes they need you to stand in so that they can light specific areas of the frame. So there's a lot of behind the scenes footage capturing me just being an 
absolute goober. We caught some moments where I'm like Jim from The Office or something. Or there was this one shot, oh my god, they ended up taking it out of the film because it just wasn't capturing quite what they wanted it to. But it was a pan from the front of the shop to the street and then back to the front of the shop and then out to the street and then bam, I'm there walking up. So in the behind the scenes, what you wouldn't have seen from that shot is that I had to hide out of the way and then as soon as he's panning back towards the door, <laughs> I run out, I run out in my little ballet slippers and then I'm standing there and I have to like, oh, quick, quick, get into character, get into character. And then I start walking up. It is kind of hard to go from the mindset of, oh God, I look so goofy. Run, 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 run. And then stand there and then be like, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but if you couldn't tell, this movie was a lot of fun to shoot. I would have to say the favorite moment of the film for me is when the audience first gets to get a full visual of the Eerie Girl. It's very silhouetted, so it really does allow Eerie Girl, the person that was able to really play with the character work and really make it their own, which I really, really loved. I found it very alluring that I wanted to know more. I wanted more. It drew me in, and I will hope that for the audience that they're going to see this and want like a full feature of just knowing like who is this creature, like why, like why do they do what they do? And I think we were really able to achieve that with that one shot. And um, I'm just very, very proud of this film and what it's going to turn out to be. My favorite moment of the film is definitely my big reveal. Not to like toot my own horn or anything. I think just the cinematography is excellent. I love the way that the lighting came out. The music that Jared chose to put under the scene is incredible. Carly is also super cool. We became fast friends after that. She was a, she was a fun person to kill. I would say my favorite moment of the film is the fact that we were able to incorporate so much more movement in this film than we have before. And with this film, we were finally able to somewhat do that, where instead of before, all we could do is put a camera on a tripod, tilt a tripod left to right here and there and kind of just keep doing that. So generally, when working on the script and like collaborating on a script together, uh, we will usually start with an idea together, usually just a scene or like an action happening. And then I will go and write about 60% of the script, and then him and I will get back in touch with each other and really aim on working on flow, making sure there's a good enough um, context there without, since it's a short, you can only fit so much in. Like every time we make a film, we try to make it better than the last or learn from our mistakes. When we made our first two films alone and guilt we like noticed like okay the scares here didn't flow that well we kind of just put like random scares here because thought they were a good idea whereas like for this one closed we really wanted to focus on making sure like she got from point a to point b to point c and it made sense why she would make these decisions and go to where she did in my head i was like, okay let's shoot the coffee shop and then i kind of had the general idea of like coffee shop and let's have this like creepy girl kind of like stalking her and so i gave kayleen that general idea and then kayleen sort of just like writes like how she said like 60 percent of it like the general outline of everything and then we kind of go in and like figure out the scares and like how should the character be and like what should they say how would they react but yeah it's kind of what we did with this one rewrite and light to what's possible. We don't write in a way like we know like, how are we gonna do this? Or can we even do this? You know, we write in a way where like, we know we can get it. I always have an idea in my head when I'm writing things like how I'm gonna light it. Cause we don't have a lot of equipment, right? We don't have like millions of dollars to get all these different lights and stuff. So we know, we know we have the lights that we have. And then we think about scenes and settings to where we can light for that. Writing and lighting for me goes hand in hand, just cause we are like, so like small budget, no budget that they kind of have to, just to make sure that things come out the way that like, you really want them to and the best quality that they can. So when your literal partner of your company is like your partner in life, it has great benefits, but it also can have cons as well. The cons I can find is that sometimes if we are having a more tense day on set, it will tend to come home with us. And I think also we are just so comfortable with each other that like, well, I know I can sometimes project whatever I'm feeling onto him. So it is very, very hard to not project those emotions on your other partner because they're dealing with the same stress you are. But it really does aid to help with just like writing process and production. Just like we really understand each other, know what each other's weaknesses and strengths are. So we really can play with that within our own production. And I think it just is nice to be able to rely on like your partner fully for the company and like at home for whatever. In any instance you need it, um, and understand like they know where you're at with work so they understand why you might be extra stressed or tense or upset or emotional or just tired. Understand like your partner has like the full comprehension of what's going on and you don't have to like communicate that is really nice and easier. Um, but I think communication for us tends to play out better just because we can be fully transparent with each other with anything and we really do rely and trust each other's opinions. You know there are pros and cons like I think the pros are 
we are like so comfortable with each other that like we can literally tell each other anything if we think something's a bad idea or like we shouldn't do this or like you know why are we doing this in a way we're not afraid to tell each other that whereas like if you're working with somebody else you're not so close with or like like say it's the first time working with them it's kind of hard to open your mouth and like say like what you're actually like feeling or thinking whereas with us it you know it doesn't really matter too much i just say like you know i think the cons are a lot of times like you may not agree on how things should be done or shot or how it should look you know i think for the first two films that we did it was kind of learning how to navigate being a couple but also being like business partners with the company like for the first one it was our, our very first film we were kind of just kind of like trying to test the waters and figure out how to balance things out and what to do and then with guilt that one was a 30 minute film compared to our first one was like six minutes so it's all a learning process like i think this one the way we work together was probably the best we have out of all the films we've done just because you know it's learning process and figuring out like what works with us and what doesn't work with us. Like again, playing with each other's like strengths and weaknesses. Like I know I can just rely on him. We get a secondhand language sometimes just being like, hey, can you do this? And like, that's all you have to say. And I know what he's talking about. I know I can trust her to get the job done. It's not like a director is hiring a cinematographer to come and do their job. We are both benefiting the same way, the same like equal amount from the same thing. Like we both want the best that can possibly come mm -hmm. out. Cause it's not like we're trying to just, just get our cinematography credits or our director credits and like move on. We're trying to build you know, good films and build our business at the same time, you know? So we need to work on all different aspects of the films to make sure everything's going like perfectly the way we want it to. Hi, it's me again. Real quick, before we close this documentary out, I just want to let you know that we are currently funding for our next upcoming short horror film called Somnum. The GoFundMe will be listed down below and we are going to be funding until the second week of June. And of course, you'll also find a link to watch Closed. It is free to watch on YouTube as well as all of our social media, my social media, and all of the Ashes to Ashes social media. But more than anything, I just want to thank you guys all so much for your support, whether it be for Closed or for our upcoming short Somnum. We appreciate you all so much. And we all just hope that you guys are as excited to watch Somnum as much as we are excited to make it. So I hope to see you then. Bye!